Hey everyone, it's Christy Salazar here and we're here with Equality News Network and I'm on location today and I'm bringing you some information you don't want to miss out. You want to know the bigger, better you? Bigger is my keyword today. Equality News is on location here at, Ren at Renuance Cosmetic Surgery Center and I have Dr. Eichenberg here, Brian Eichenberg, and he's giving me all the 411 on is bigger better, what's too big, and how do I know if I'm a right candidate? So, if you're considering breast augmentation, Equality News Network is the only network that's gonna bring you the 411 inside with the doctor and tell you yes or no. Now, as far as options and techniques, so we kind of spoke about the vector a little bit. What kind of options and techniques does someone have, a woman have that's you know considering a breast augmentation? Augmentation. You can spend hours talking about all kinds of different options, but the main two options for breast implants are saline and silicone. Mm -hmm. the, the saline implants um, are very similar to the silicone implants. Um, they both have a silicone elastomer shell and we actually pull them out so people can see and feel them here in the office. I tell women if, if one was the best one, we everyone would know it and that's mm -hmm. what everyone would get. Um, so there's not one that's better than the other, and of course if there was, I would tell people. Um, sometimes in a certain patient, a certain one will be better. We know from studies we've done in thousands of women and asking them, tell us what you think about your implants, what are the good things, what are the bad things. The biggest complaint of women with saline is that you can feel rippling, where you can feel the edge of the mm -hmm. implant. Sometimes you can even see it when someone leans forward in a bathing suit. Um, now, women with the saline implants, they never say, I don't like them, take them out. Mm -hmm. They're happy with the implants, it's just they feel that rippling. Women that have had both silicone and saline, they always say the silicone look and feel a little more natural. Mm -hmm. The um, Your muscle, we almost always put the implants under the muscle next to the ribs because they look and feel more natural. And your muscle covers the implant here and your breast tissue covers it here, but out here in the side there's not a lot of tissue covering it. So in a really thin woman, especially if you want to get a larger implant, mm -hmm. then usually the silicone will look and feel a little more natural. Is that kind of when you see a woman who's gone too big is because you see the rounded edges that the body does maybe doesn't have the skin or the fatty tissue to kind of make it even a little rounder or? Sometimes that can be the case. Um, there are still several surgeons who put the implants in above the muscle mm -hmm. um, and then there's not as much tissue covering it. and because there's just skin here in the middle, then they can't put them as close together in the middle, and then sometimes you get that real round look to those implants. Okay. Um, we don't usually put them under the muscle here unless it's somewhat like a competitive bodybuilder or an unusual okay. circumstance. Um, so that's often the case. It's not, it's very rarely is that the type of implant that we use. So under the muscle is usually going to give you the most natural result. The that's most correct. kind of, I would say, nature's given assay right there. Okay. That's correct. All right. And then the talking about, you know, the surgery, of course, you need to, is there a particular qualifying candidate? Do you, is there a list of qualifications that a candidate would have to go through, maybe health-wise, that is considering having the augmentation? That's a really good question. This is an elective surgery, so you want to be healthy. In general, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean if you have medical problems you can't have the surgery. There's plenty of women that have high blood pressure or diabetes or certain things, and as long as they're under control, it's fine and safe mm -hmm. to do the surgery. But because it's an elective surgery, it's not worth risking your life over. So we don't do surgery on anyone here unless we know it's safe. Um, but speaking with the patient, I can usually get a good idea, and most young women who get breast implants are healthy to begin with. Mm -hmm. So it'd be unusual to have some health factor that would keep you from having breast implants. Okay. Is there a certain age cutoff that, you know, someone like a woman considering it would have to be above a certain age or is it a surgery that's open to any age? That's a really good question. You need to be 18 years of age. Okay. The um, it's suggested for the silicone implants that you're 22 years of age. Oh. Um, not for any great reason, it's just in the studies they did, all the women were 22 20 years old. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, it, it certainly wouldn't be a problem. And, if, and as I mentioned earlier, if you're a thin woman uh, who's getting larger implants, you're probably gonna be happier with the silicone implants. Mm -hmm. um, if you have them before age 18, a lot of women aren't done growing. And so it's not a good idea, because then things are gonna change. If you know you're going to get pregnant in the near future, of course your breasts are going to change. So it's probably better to wait and have your You heard it from the doctor. <laughs> after that. Um, you know, if, if you're 18 or 20 years old, have small breasts and want implants, 
and don't think you'll have children for another five or ten years, you know, then that's reasonable to do that, knowing they're going to change probably after you have kids, mm -hmm. and then you see what they look like, and if you need to fix them up afterwards, you can. And now, is there problems bringing that to the table? Is there problems with breastfeeding when it comes to having a breast augmentation? No, that's a good question. They've, uh, we've done a lot of studies on this. About 10% of women in the general population can't breastfeed for one reason or another because they don't make enough milk, because the kid can't latch on correctly, different things like that. And it's the exact same percentage, about 10% of women with breast implants can't breastfeed. But we don't think there's any correlation at all. And we specifically, when we do the surgery, we go away from all those milk dogs in case someone wants to breastfeed later. And it's nice for people to go on the website and look at the pictures of both the office and the operating room before they even come in and get comfortable. You know, we have pictures of our staff, of course, and uh, it makes you more comfortable even before you get to the office. It's easy to call the office, 951-506-1040. Bren's our surgery scheduler, and she uh, will either answer the phone directly or call you back immediately. Uh, if you go to our website, there's lots of pictures of the staff, the office explains everything we do. There's before and after pictures and you can click on there and do a, a consultation online, request an appointment online, or you can just call the number and call the office. And I have to say your website was very user friendly. It allowed me to check out the Vectra, it allowed me to look at the staff prior to coming in. So I felt at home when I came in. So that's always a nice pleasant feeling for a patient to have. So as you can see, Renewance Cosmetic Surgery Center definitely are, are the surgery center that makes you feel warm, welcome, and they embrace you to be the better you. So come on out, check us out, book your appointment today. Thank you so much, Dr. Eichenberg. We appreciate you being here, and thank you for educating us on what we need to know before we do the big surgery. Thanks for being here. I love my job. Thank you. We do too. Bye-bye. <laughs>